Hello and welcome. So in this video we are going to give a step-by-step -step guide, a deep dive and demo on Microsoft Entra Private Access and how to configure and implement this solution. So with Entra Private Access as currently in public preview, we can secure access to all private apps, resources and protocols from endpoints to secure all access using a zero trust model. So this is built on zero trust where we can connect users securely from any device and network to private apps on premise and across any cloud. We can give granular access control to apps and separate at the user or device level and control access to private apps across any environment. So this reduces the need for legacy VPNs and traditional network access, which doesn't really scale to modern demands of cloud and user experience isn't great connecting via VPN to our corporate network. Also, it's not really secure as once we've logged in over the VPN to our network perimeter and are on our private network, we normally have access to everything. So we leave it open to an attack from a compromised account or device and we give unnecessarily access to everything within the perimeter network. So with zero trust, we trust no one and we give least privileged access. All identities must be authenticated, authorised and continuously validated before being granted access to company private applications and data. If you didn't catch the last video, we talk about this approach in depth and we look at typical legacy network security approaches with office environments in the cloud and what's the need for this change. The need for this change to keep up with our flexible and modern ways of working with digital transformation and the way we secure access. The link to that video is in the description. This video will cover a step by step by first setting up Entra Private Access and activating on your tenant and installing the app proxy connector. And then we create an Azure Enterprise app in the cloud um, for our access. Um, and then we specify the ports that we need opening on that app, uh, such as RDP, SMB, HTTP, and the IP address of the server hosting those protocols in our private internal network. We then discuss conditional access policies, targeting that enterprise app and securing it and apply security controls such as MFA, multi-factor authentication, and checking device compliance, identity protection and governance, group access, network access, etc. And then we install the global access client and give a demo on Microsoft Entra private access. So don't forget to subscribe to the Cloud Inspired channel. Please like, comment, and help grow the channel. A lot of hard work goes into producing these videos, so that would be most appreciated. Thank you. Okay, so now let's first activate via entra.microsoft.com. So we go to Global Secure Access Preview and get started. And then we can activate Global Secure Access in your tenant. Please note a Global Secure Access Administrator, Security Administrator or Global Admin must be assigned to the user to activate. OK, in the intro portal, go to connectors and then click download the connector service. Check out the system requirements, uh, Windows 2012 R2 or later OS, outbound traffic allowed 443 and port 80, and the connector needs to have access to all the on-premise um, apps um, that you intend to publish. Connectors only send outbound requests on port 443 and 80. The outbound traffic is sent to the application proxy service and to the published applications and you don't have to open inbound ports um, because traffic flows both ways once a session is established. You also don't have to configure inbound access through your firewalls. You can install connectors inside your corporate network or on a virtual machine that runs in the cloud. Connectors can run within a perimeter network, also known as a DMZ. But it's not really necessary because all traffic is outbound, so your network stays secure. OK, read and accept the terms if you're happy and download. So let's now install on a server that has access to our apps. Enter your credentials to connect to the tenant.
we have no outbound proxy to connect to the internet, but there are details there how to configure the connector to go out for a proxy if required. So once installed, when we go to services, we can see the app proxy service is running. And now when we go back to the portal and refresh, we can now see the application proxy is connected and it's running. We can install two application proxies here on separate servers for resiliency and redundancy, but for this demo, we will just use a single app proxy. Okay, good. So now let's create an Azure Enterprise app in the Azure cloud so we can publish RDP, SMB, HTTP, and then we can specify the ports that need opening on that app and the IP address of the server hosting those protocols in our private network. Go to Enterprise Applications, New Application, give it a name and click Save. We can now see the Enterprise application created and in the next section we will open and publish the ports required. Okay, so let's click into the app we created in the last section. Uh, we go to Network Access Properties and now we can publish our private application segments through the app proxy service using Microsoft Entra Private Access. Click Add Application Segment and we have the option here for fully qualified domain names, IP range, etc. But in this case, we will just use a single IP address. Let's add the IP address of the server hosting our app and the port for testing. So let's add RDP 3389. And also we can add on the same line HTTP port 80. Let's save this one. And we can add another IP hosting our file shares in SMB on port 445. And then we can save. Okay, so looking good. So we have our enterprise app created um, in Entra and ports published through the app proxy. We can now look at conditional access policies and we can target that enterprise app we created and we can secure that. We can apply security controls such as MFA, checking device compliance, identity protection and governance, group access and network access, etc. We can give granular uh, access control to each app Depending on the app, these might be different. So we can separate at the user or device level and control access to private apps uh, across any environment. So let's create a conditional access policy. So we go to new policy and we give it a name. So first off, we can control which users or groups have access to the enterprise app. And we will add in uh, the cloud inspired user. When we go to target, we can see that our enterprise app we created earlier is targeted. So we could have different conditional access policies for different apps, depending on the type of access needed. We do have some options on where the policy is applied. Um, global secure access is part of this, but as in public preview right now, some options are not available, but should be in the future. Okay, so our app is targeted and we can set conditions of access and control this based on risk. So for example, if the user or sign-in was flagged as high risk by identity protection, then we can configure a policy to block access to the app. There are videos on how Azure ID identity protection works and step-by-step -step guides and configuration in the Cloud Inspired channel. And I've put the links in the description in case you need to see these. We can set conditions on device platform and what operating system has access or is excluded from access and we can control user access to include or exclude based on location so we could for example only allow trusted locations to the app or selected locations all compliant network locations can be used when global secure access signaling is turned on in a later section of this video this compliant network makes it easier for administrators to manage and maintain 
without having to maintain a list of all of the organization's location uh, IP addresses. We can lock this down to client apps only, allowing access and filter device access also. For access controls can block or grant access based on our conditions and require MFA, authentication strength, devices to be marked as compliant, and only allow hybrid Azure AD joined devices. We can require certain approved client apps um, or app protection policies. In this case, we want MFA to be applied to the app and we want the session sign in for this to be set to one day. So this gives you an example on how we can lock this down for each app and build on zero trust where we can connect users securely from any device and network to private apps on premise and across any cloud. We can give granular access uh, control to apps and separate at the user or device level and control access to private apps, giving different types of conditional access controls and policies. We turn this policy on and then we click create to apply the conditional access policy for this enterprise application. Let's now enable private access. So we go traffic forwarding and we tick private access profile. This will give private access to our application we created earlier. Okay, great. So with all that now done, let's install the global access client on Windows 10 machine and we can test this all out. So there are some prerequisites and known limitations listed in this article at the time of creating this video. Support is for 64-bit Windows 10 or 11 and devices must be either Azure AD joined or hybrid Azure AD joined and premium P1 license or equivalent. We check and our device is Azure AD joined. So let's now install the client on our Windows 10 device. We get prompted to pick an account and we can now see that the client has connected and created a private connection. We go to session management and adaptive access and we can see an option for global secure access signaling. So global secure access introduces a concept of a compliant network within conditional access and continuous access evaluation. This compliant network checks uh, and ensures users connect from a verified network connectivity model for their specific tenant and that they are compliant with security policies that are enforced by administrators. So it allows administrators to secure resources behind a compliant network with advanced conditional access controls. So this compliant network, it makes it easier for administrators to manage and maintain um, without having to maintain a list of all an organization's IP addresses of location. And this also allows the use of turning on all compliant network locations in the conditional access policies. Okay, good, so let's now demo the private access. So we can RDP direct from the client over the internet to the private address and we can see the traffic flow, that's 3389 RDP is active. Now we can try HTTP port 80 to the private IIS web server IP address and we can confirm that connection through the browser. And then we now also browse the internal server file shares via SMB port 445. And yes, brilliant, it connects successfully. 
So there we have shown a workable demo using Microsoft Enter Private Access. So let's now check the traffic logs in the next section from the portal. So as this solution comes out of public preview, we will see further enhancements in logging. And as you can see for the internet logs, SharePoint Online is available, but not Teams or Exchange at this time. Audit logs is also the same and currently in development. And we can see current traffic logs from each client, which is useful. Audit logs is also the same and currently in development. And we can see current traffic logs from each client, which is useful. So don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like, comment, and help grow the channel. All the very best and catch you all soon. Thank you.